Let's take a closer look at this intriguing dilemma. I'm joined by Sohan D'Souza, research assistant at the MIT Media Lab. So, um, Sohan, there are cultural differences in different countries, as we know, with the importance and priorities on people, animals, young versus old, that sort of thing. How should companies, manufacturers, and governors, governments use this information? Well, this is ultimately a policy decision that has to be um, decided through negotiation among the various stakeholders, the, uh, um, the lawmakers, the insurers, the industry, people in industry, consumer advocacy. Um, what we hope to do with this da data is to provide background information um, that can be used to inform this kind of debate, this kind of dialogue. Um, it could be used to inform what fears need to be allayed in the public. Uh, it can be used to um, inform what kind of pushback to expect in different places in the world, for example. Oh, I was looking at the Smurl machine test online. Very interesting stuff, gathering information from real people about decisions that they would make. What do you think was the most surprising piece of information or conclusion so far? Um, really just how neatly um, many of the countries just kind of cluster into these different cultural, um, into this cult cultural tree, I guess. Um, and how these correlate with different national metrics like economic inequality or uh, individualism in culture, um, cultural distance from the US, for example. What would you say when it comes to the United States comparing it to what you found um, rever you know, regarding information from China? Well, uh, China has an interesting profile. Like, for example, the, the uh, propensity to save uh, the younger is much less pronounced in China. In fact, there's a slight preference for saving um, older people. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the major differences. Um, and you can see this also correlates with uh, individualism and versus collectivism in the culture. When it comes to self-driving cars around the world, do engineers have to program decisions based on the laws, regulations in different countries, or do you think that there should be a universal moral code when it comes to driverless cars in the future? Um, so this will probably be decided eventually by, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, the, um, the dialogue that has to happen. Um, I mean, this is kind of a prescriptive question. It's not really my place to, uh, to say, but um, yeah, we just hope that that this can be used to inform those kinds of um, those kinds of decisions, regardless of where they happen. Whether there eventually will be a universal moral code um, is not certain, but it, it does it does raise interesting questions. Like if a, if a person drives from one country to another, um, you know that that would make it complicated if they had different different um, moral codes in different countries, for example. Yeah, you know we've already seen accidents. Some that have turned fatal earlier this year with Uber in Arizona, also Tesla. Um, and I guess another question is, who is responsible when there is an injury or a death? Is it the machine or is it the manufacturer? Um, I guess, again, this is a, this is a question of um, regulation. I guess regulators would have to hash out these issues um, among themselves um, uh, with, with the government and uh, um, with the insurers, possibly. And it depends on how much, um, on how much um, pro probably blame should be a, pro a proportion to each of these. So, Sohan, why did you decide or why was this process or this moral machine um, put in place? I mean, how important is this conversation? The conversation is very important uh, because the technology is advancing by leaps and bounds. I mean, right here in Boston, we already have um, um, uh, autonomous vehicles being tested um, live, like on our roads. Um, and in many other places, um, autonomous vehicles are being tested to varying degrees. Um, and if the technology is advancing so fast, we need to iron out uh, these, these ethical questions, basically, when machines are given um, you know, the decision-making ability over, over life and death or injury, perhaps. All right, so Honda Souza, thank you so much for joining us from Boston. We appreciate it.